Today I'd like to show you a template that I made for the Radical Technologies Accelerator. The app I used to design this was MIDI Designer Pro 2, and the template will be available through the app. Let me show you if you go home, it would be in the Browse feature. So let me go through some of the basics here. What I have is three different banks of different settings. And to access these different banks, you just press the bank button and for the side that you want to work with. And it will cycle through all of them. What we have is uh, bank one which shows the different oscillators and all of their parameters, the filters, the effects, there are two sections for that, and LFOs. In bank two, you have your envelopes, um, and they're all labeled one through six, along with the, setting, the parameter for that. You've got the mono and poly modes, um, mono uh, would go through the last high or low in terms of how it gets re-triggered or um, what ha note priority, excuse me. And then there's how it gets uh, re-triggered um, or the envelope for that. And then you've got your glide and unison. And I also have uh, the pitch bend for the pitch wheel. And next we have the string filter noise and noise filter and uh, ring modulation. Now if you have your if you have the any of the expansions, uh, at least one, you also have access to an organ which is shown here. All of the settings are available um, here that you can use for the accelerator. So if you play organ, uh, I do not, uh, you can um, work with the settings there. So one of the neat features about this application is that it allows you to um, set defaults for all the different parameters. And so if you have a sound that you are working on, and we can use the one I was using as an example, you can then go and initialize the patch. And all of those default settings will be sent to the accelerator. So what I have is just oscillator one as a sine wave. And you can see I can, I can change that. Um, another thing that I've added is, um, since it's kind of hard to set the course tuning as a specific value, I have it set to do octaves. And that's somewhat useful, I think, when you're working with your other um, your other oscillators. Now, to use each of the oscillators, you would also need to send them through to the filters unless you're using them only for um, modulating other sounds. Um, so like phase modulation um, of oscillator three to oscillator one. 
So that's kind of the basics of these uh, different banks. The third bank that I have goes through all of the different sources and destinations for the mod matrix. You've got um, six different pages, um, mod source one through six, all the way up to um, 32. And for these, I don't have I don't have the program sending defaults because some of the patches, I think all of the patches have some of these, um, at least on the first page, have the different parameters um, on there, such as eight, uh, the envelope three uh, deals with filter one cutoff and envelope four modulates uh, filter two cutoff. So when you're in the filter section and modifying the um, cutoff and the envelope depth, uh, that envelope depth, I believe, is controlled by the mod matrix. So to use this section, you would need to purchase the in, uh, in-app purchase for the picker, which, allow which is what allows you to go through all of these labeled um, sources, and all of them are present and function, uh, send the correct signal for which parameter you want and the correct destinations as well. So that would be something that is extra, but I think it's worth it, especially if you're using um, the mod matrix. It can be a little tedious to go through each of the different settings uh, on the accelerator itself. And one of the last things that I'll show you is at the end of the matrix, I did something that I would have liked to do have done in the uh, oscillator section, which is to add precise tuning. Now I did this extra as using the picker because then you can change the tuning of your oscillators uh, more precisely. So if you wanted it to be um, five um, notes up. Uh, you could you could do that. One thing I'd like to mention is related to the effects section. Now when one thing that I wasn't able to uh, assign on this app is the effects dry or versus wet. So you can actually turn up a parameter, let's see. So if you looked on the actual, synthesizer, you'd see if I turn up the delay wet, you'll see that it says bypass um, and then in parentheses the value. There was no way um, in, so if you were in the effects section, sorry, and in delay, if I press the effects dry and wet, you'll see that it changes between uh, dry versus wet. So pushing that encoder doesn't send a signal. So what I've uh, been using is if you go into the user section at the bottom of this um, and press down, there's a user assignment and effects wet. If you go to that, these different encoder knobs when you're in the user section, if you press them down, it will bypass them or have them open. So that was not something I was able to use with the patch in initializing feature here but uh, it's something that can be pretty easily uh, fixed. Another thing was I found that with reverb, um, when I initialized the patch, I still could hear some residual reverb, and it didn't seem like there was any way to get rid of that. So what I did was set the equalizer to low pass and the equalizer frequency all the way down, so basically cut out any sound that was coming from reverb. So it's pretty easy to fix. Let's see if I... So right now you obviously can't hear any of that. Um, so if we turn the wet or the volume up all the way for, for that in the room size, um, and then start opening up the filter, you can start hearing reverb. So 
So that's a basic run through of the app. Again, um, this is MIDI Designer Pro 2, and my template should be available through the browse feature. And if you have any questions, just uh, ask me below in YouTube in the comment section, and I can get back to you uh, fairly quickly. And have a good day.